small village of Bethlehem, there was a severe famine. A man named Elimelech, along with his wife Naomi and their two sons, Malin and Chilion, decided to leave their homeland. They moved to the land of Moab in search of a better life. The journey was long and tiring, with the family crossing fields and hills, always hoping for a better future. In Moab, Elimelech and his family settled on a small piece of farmland. They worked hard to till the soil and plant crops. Their fields were filled with rows of wheat and barley, and they even had a few animals, a cow, some sheep, and a couple of goats. Life seemed to be improving until tragedy struck. Elimelech passed away, leaving Naomi to care for their sons alone. Years went by, and Malin and Chilion grew up. They married Moabite women. Malin married Ruth, and Chilion married Orpah. For a while, they lived peacefully, working the land and taking care of their small farm. But then, both Malin and Chilion also died, leaving Naomi, Ruth, and Orpah without husbands. Naomi, now old and heartbroken, decided to return to Bethlehem. She had heard that the famine had ended and that the Lord had provided food for his people. She called Ruth and Orpah to her one morning. My daughters, Naomi said, her voice trembling. I am going back to my homeland. You should return to your mother's houses. May the Lord be kind to you as you have been to me and my sons. Orpah wept and kissed Naomi goodbye. She returned to her family in Moab. But Ruth clung to Naomi, her eyes filled with determination. Please, don't urge me to leave you, Ruth said. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Naomi saw Ruth's sincerity and nodded, her heart swelling with a mixture of sorrow and gratitude. Together they made the long journey back to Bethlehem. When they arrived, the town was buzzing with excitement. Is this Naomi? The women of Bethlehem asked surprised to see her after so many years. Don't call me Naomi, she said bitterly. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Despite her grief, Naomi and Ruth settled into a small house on the edge of town. Ruth was determined to provide for them, so she asked Naomi's permission to glean in the fields. It was the time of barley harvest, and the fields were alive with the sound of workers and the sight of animals grazing nearby. Ruth found herself in a field belonging to Boaz, a wealthy and kind man. Boaz noticed Ruth working tirelessly, picking up the leftover grain. He asked his foreman about her. She is the Moabite woman who returned with Naomi. The foreman explained. Boaz approached Ruth. Listen, my daughter, he said gently. Don't go and glean in another field. Stay here with the women who work for me. I've told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. Ruth bowed down, overwhelmed by his kindness. Why have I found such favor in your eyes, a foreigner? Why? I don't understand it. Boaz smiled. I've heard about everything you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. As the days went by, Boaz showed Ruth even more kindness, inviting her to eat with his workers and instructing them to leave extra grain for her to collect. Ruth shared everything with Naomi, who began to see the light returning to their lives. One night, Naomi told Ruth to go to Boaz on the threshing floor. Ruth did as she was told, and when Boaz awoke and found her there, she asked him to spread his cloak over her, symbolizing his role as her protector. Boaz was touched by her loyalty and agreed to do all that she asked. But first, he needed to resolve a matter with a closer relative who had the first right to redeem Naomi's land and marry Ruth. The next day, Boaz went to the town gate and settled the matter in front of the elders. Boaz and Ruth were married, and their union brought joy not only to them but also to Naomi. They had a son named Obed, who would become the grandfather of King David. 
Naomi's bitterness turned to joy as she cradled her grandson. The Lord had indeed restored her and given her a new family. The fields of Bethlehem once again flourished under the blessings of God, and the story of Ruth's loyalty and Boaz's kindness became a cherished tale among the people of Israel.